All right, so in this video, what we're gonna do is take a look at the sweep generator. Uh, it can be used for a variety of different purposes, can create a lot of different um, types of geometry. It's great for animation. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here are two of kind of the end results uh, we're going to be seeing here um, using text in a couple of different ways, whether it's to actually sweep the text itself or to create text from the sweep. Um, so those are really kind of two of the main ways you can um, use the sweep. So let's go ahead and get started and just talk about the basics of it. Um, now the sweep can be found in our generators here, right, right there. So I'll go ahead and create one. And you need to put two splines or two shapes inside of a sweep in order for it to work. So I could just say create an arc and then choose say the X and Z. Um, plane or orientation, and then I'm going to also create a second shape like this a rectangle. Okay, I'm going to put both of these inside the sweep, and the order here does matter. So you want kind of the path to be second and the shape you want to use to be first. So in this case, the rectangle is the shape, the arc is the path, and if I scale this rectangle down, we'll now start to see something like this. And what we are seeing is the rectangle essentially being extruded along our arc or path that we are using. So let's start in the sweep and take a look at the object properties here. Starting with the object properties, the isoparm subdivision is not something we need to worry too much about. Even with this on, you won't see much happening. Um, the end scale is important because it is one way we can make the size smaller. Uh, we also have end rotation if you want to have this kind of rotate. And this can be an interesting way to make the animation we're about to see a little more interesting because now our shape is rotating. Uh, the main animation properties are this start growth and end growth property. So you can see now if I take my start growth to 100% um, and then uh, slide this back, we're able to get this cube, you know, kind of growing, moving, um, and rotating as it's revealing or being swept across our path here. End growth, kind of the other side of this. So when you combine these, you can get a really interesting shape, almost like a, a tail or a trail. Um, coming out from it. And we'll come back and animate this here very shortly. Um, the majority of these options, we don't need to worry about too much um, if you're just using kind of a simple setup like this. Um, banking is important. Um, it can help with the rotation as we'll see in some of the other examples. Um, rails, we're not going to get into the rail portion of this since um, oftentimes you can fix that in the detail section here, which by default is obviously collapsed but we can twirl it open. Um, the scale here is another way you can influence the size, um, very much like that end scale property, okay? Except you can do it at the beginning or end. And since this is a graph, uh, you can add points, work with the curves, the Bezier handles to get something a little bit more um, interesting. And if I take off my rotation for a second, um, you'll see that we can add points by holding control. You can actually make something a little bit more natural or organic or um, crazy looking. And so you can create things like tree branches and, and other things a little bit easier if you add some um, you know, irregularity in the scale. Rotation is kind of the same way. We could add the rotation manually and get more or less, have it rotate some different ways um, than what you get with just a single property. I'm using this graph and the way these graphs work is um, down here at the bottom we have zero. Um, vertical is value, so in this case, the amount of scale, in this case, the amount of rotation. Uh, horizontally, we have along the spline, so zero is going to be the beginning of the spline, one will be the end. So you can control the scale or rotation however you want from the beginning to the end um, and adjust the amount of scale or the amount of rotation you have um, going both ways. So um, that is really what we're seeing in the details section. In the caps, section. Um, you can add a cap here. All right. Notice how we're able to add a cap to the um, beginning and end. Um, very similar to the extrude. Okay. You even have the same bevel presets. So uh, that can be a nice way to 
add just a little bit more detail to this. And that'll be important a bit later on when um, we start getting into text and start working with it there. Um, you also have selections for applying different materials. Uh, remember, you don't actually need to turn these on just in the material tag or texture tag. I can't recall actually what it's called anymore. Um, you can just type it in right here, that C1, C2, R1, R2. Okay, you don't need to actually create them. Um, not a bad idea to create them if you want, and that way you can just kind of drag it in, but you can also just use um, the naming right there. All right, so that's kind of the basics of working with the sweep, and I guess we can go and just animate this very quickly to kind of see what that looks like. I do want to add some of my rotation back in. I thought that looked pretty interesting. And it was the start growth primarily that I'm going to animate. Notice how it completely disappears. So that isn't something I have to worry about. I'm at frame zero. I'll set the start growth at 100%. Go to say maybe frame 50, set the start growth to zero. I think I said that backwards, but going from 100 to zero here is what we keyframed. And then we can kind of offset our tail a little bit. So keyframe the end growth at say 14. Go 14 past it, take it down to say something like one, keyframe it, and now we should have something like that. Kind of a neat little way of animating um, the shape, growing, moving, whatever you want to call it. And the path it's taking, remember, is based on the arc we've put in here, but this could be any kind of custom path or shape uh, you've made. Okay, so that's the basics of this. Let's go back and talk about text. So you may be going, all right, I want to do a sweep with text. I'm going to just create some, some text that almost looks kind of script-like. Um, I'm going to add that into a sweep. And so what you're seeing here is my text spline with an instance of a circle. Um, it just happens to be that circle there. I'll talk more about why I did that here shortly. Um, and this is what you end up with. And this doesn't look very good for a couple of different reasons, but the biggest reason is that we end up with two parts of each letter being swept, right? The outer and the inner here. Um, when in reality, what we want is one line that kind of goes down uh, the middle. Um, and so that while this can work, okay, it does look a little bit strange and we can run into some weird issues with some points and we'll see more of that here and I'll explain what that is. Um, but yeah, you could come in here and then do the same type of animation as before, but it's not going to really look like it's writing on. And that's kind of why you might use a sweep with a, a script like font like this. Um, the animation is very kind of fast and quick for a lot of these different places. Um, notice how, you know, a lot of it happens um, over the course of a frame, just doing a, a percent or two really seems to, you know, go pretty fast. So this isn't really the best way of doing this. While the results can look good, especially maybe if you threw it into a, a volume measure, so it kind of smoothed things out, maybe it could work. Um, but that's really not what we want to do. So a better way of doing this is to create a single spline, like I said, um, where you kind of went and did things in the middle. All right, so that's what I've kind of done here. I also think it's a good way to practice with the um, pen tool, okay? You can kind of see that's what I did with this spline is I just kind of chose the middle. Um, didn't do the most perfect job, but hopefully you get the idea of what I was going for, trying to just go split the difference between the left and right sides of this, make it a single shape. And there are a couple of places where things got a little bit off, but ultimately, you know, when you turn this on, this looks... A little bit better. Now there's definitely some issues with this. You know, the top parts here, the caps aren't pointed. Um, we could probably do something about that here. Okay. But you know, we can't really make them smaller very easily with this, other than using that detail graph, okay, because n scales not gonna work quite the way um we might expect. Uh, we also have some other issues as well. Um, one thing I will say about this method is that it's not continuous, okay? So, you know, if you've actually ever written cursive, which I'm guessing most people don't write cursive anymore um, or, or know how to, you know, really these would all be connected instead of individual letters. Um, 
And that can actually lead to some issues like we're seeing here. Now, the reason why that happens is when you have a broken handle. So if I select this point, notice how the handle here is really, really broken, okay? Um, the two um, parts of the handle are right next to each other. Uh, and you'll see if I just convert this back to a soft shape, you know, there's actually some weirdness going on. So I'll delete that point and then come in here and adjust this handle. I really should be doing this in, say, a perspective view, but something like that can work. Um, now that it's not broken, we're not going to run into that problem. Now, the end scale actually is working um, pretty good um, for making each segment here a little bit smaller. Okay, and notice how it is actually going letter by letter there. Um, and what I would do is rather than kind of adjust the end scale here, I would use the detail section. Okay, maybe add a point here in the middle and then just pull this part down. That will do the beginning of each one and that will do the end of each one. And honestly, that's looking pretty good. Um, the downside to this is that I have to do it the exact same for every letter. And you'll notice that sometimes the letters get thin and then thicker and then thin again. Um, and doing that for each letter could, or having to do it once and hope it work, works for each letter can be a bit tricky, okay? So um, while this can work, uh, it's not always the best option. Now, animation-wise, it does a really nice job of allowing us to kind of write this on. So that's great. Does one letter, then the next, then the next. All right, so overall, this is a better option, but we still have one more kind of way we can go. And that is to do each letter individually. Okay, and that's kind of what we're seeing here. Now, to explain the circle in that circle instance, what I did was rather than put a different circle in each sweep, I created an instance of one particular circle, this one here. So even, um, where was it? This one, it's an instance. And what that means is if I ever need to come in and change the size of this circle, all I have to do it is to this one circle. And since these are all instance, they're referencing this one, um, I only have to change the size in this one place, essentially. Okay, so that is the advantage of doing it um, this way. You will also see I broke out each letter into its own sweep. And so that would mean I would have different scale options for each one. Um, so if one needs to get a little bit thinner or thicker at a certain point, I can absolutely come in here and adjust the graph for each letter. Now, is this more time consum consuming? Absolutely. Okay, is it gonna give me a better result? Probably, okay, but it also depends exactly what we want and what we're going for here. So that's the advantage of doing this letter by letter. Now, animation-wise, um, I have more control over this, okay, because um, I can animate each letter individually and the animation itself is gonna look the same, but I can decide if I want any overlap between them. Um, because I'm going to have keyframes for each sweep and the end growth um, on each of these. So I could decide if, you know, maybe I wanted just a little bit of overlap instead of what we were seeing in the previous um, uh, sweep where, you know, it was one letter and then the next and then the next and then the next and then the next. You could have just a little bit of overlap depending on, once again, what you're trying to achieve. And really, if you're trying to do handwritten, well, then yeah, you probably don't want too much overlap because you can really only write one letter at a time. But, you know, maybe a couple of frames would be okay. Right as this one is stopping, this one is beginning to go. And that's something that this particular option um, would allow you to do. And so that's why I do think this is the best option. Let's get rid of this um, work plane there, kind of obnoxious. Um, you know, beside the instant circle, which simplifies kind of the the thickness of the sweep we're going for. Um, we have more flexibility and control with these different sweeps, but it's gonna be a little bit more time consuming to set up and animate and work with. So that leaves us with kind of one last option, and that is to use the text itself as the shape we're sweeping. And we're having a hard time seeing that, so let me add, there we go, just a bit of a cap. And so previously, what I did um, in these options is I use a circle, right, even if it's an instance, and then a spline of my text, 
Okay, well, what if we kind of switch that where the text was the shape that is being swept along our path? And that is what we are seeing here. Now, while this gives us a really kind of interesting uh, look as well, and um, when we go to animate this, you can see what we're getting, at least with a single spline, uh, we lose the ability to animate the individual letters. And so really, if I was taking this even further, I would separate it out um, just like I did here where I'd have a sweep with each letter, um, but I won't do that for today um, just to try and keep things simple. But once again, it depends what you're trying to achieve. But this is a great way to get some um, animation, work with text a different way when it comes to the sweep. And so definitely wanted to show that because uh, rather than creating the text itself, here we are starting with the text and then sweeping it or extruding it along the path that we put in it. So it's a little bit of a different approach that I definitely wanted to make sure uh, to show you. And ultimately, that is pretty much it for what I wanted to show uh, with the sweep object. All right, well, that will do it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you could do me a favor, like the video, comment if there's anything else you would like to see, and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. And until next time, take care.